Hi friends, Jekka here. I'm the Environmental Education Program Director with the University of Montevallo, and I'm here at the University Lake today. It is a gorgeous recreational lake. We also have a nature trail that's about one mile long that goes around it. And I was walking this nature trail today thinking to myself, wow, what gorgeous weather we have today. And then I started really thinking about the weather I was noticing the clouds reflection in the lake and it's kind of humid and I was like what do all these words mean that we use to describe weather? As I was thinking about all these questions I decided to ask my friends if they also had questions and to contact an expert who can help me answer them. Hi friends I'm so excited you guys can join us today for our first Ask an Expert segment. I am very excited for our guest Ashley Gann. Hi, Ashley. Hey. So we have some questions for you since you're an expert in weather. First question is, what type of meteorologist are you and where do you work? That's a great question. Well, all meteorologists study the weather and specifically I'm what's called a broadcast meteorologist because I do weather on television. But traditionally, academically, most meteorologists study the same subjects while in school. It's just that some may take a little bit of a different course towards operational meteorology, which is someone who works for the National Weather Service or maybe the National Hurricane Center or a broadcast track where there are meteorologists that's delivering uh, weather messages to the public via television or different types of media. And right now, I am currently working at CBS 42 in Birmingham, Alabama. Um, I have actually worked um, in television for nearly 15 years, and most of my career has been in the state of Alabama. That is awesome. I did not realize there were so many different types of meteorologists. The next question is, how far out can you make a forecast? Oh, that's a million dollar question because now on the internet, you'll see forecasts for months and months in advance. Here's the reality. We have some great computer technology and we've really seen an uptick in the quality of weather data that we've gotten over the last 30 to 50 years. But our forecasting tools are great within the next 48 hours to three days. They're really good within five to seven days. And beyond seven days, we get a little bit broader as far as how the science pans out. And the reason why is think about if you're at a starting point and you're going from point A to point B. Well, if it's if at point A, you may be slightly off the mark by just a small amount. Well, by the time you get to the end, it's going to be way off, right? It's going to be a lot different. So that's kind of how forecasting is. The closer we are to real time, the much better the forecast is. And the further away we are, there's so many variables that go into forecasting the weather that if any one of those variables is tweaked ever so slightly, the outcome could be a much bigger difference. That's great to know. And that's such a great perspective about how far out it'll actually change. Just so if you're a little bit off, it could really drastically be way off if you, if you take a lot of um, salt with that. So if I want to become a meteorologist just like you, what subjects in school are important? Uh, most importantly, get involved in math and science. Those are going to be your two key topics and subjects. Um, math is very important. It kind of sets the foundation for what we do because it helps us understand all of the weather models that we use. Now, in my day in and day out job, I'm not sitting there calculating big weather formulas, but because I have that math background, I understand how they work. Secondly, the science. It's really important. One great thing about science is that we're always learning about how we're figuring things out. Science is kind of the subject of, of solutions and we're, we're figuring out whether it's earth sciences or medical sciences. Um, but I would say earth sciences is where if you've got an opportunity to take some earth sciences classes, that's really good. But math and science are going to be two really key subjects that students need to kind of dive into at a young age if they're interested in weather. That is so cool. Also that the science is related to other things. So it as is. you're learning, you might want to branch off or you might want to go towards meteorology, which would be really cool. So this is a question that I think a lot of people have. Um, when the forecast says there is a 50% chance of rain, what does that actually mean? 
I love this question uh, because we put percentages on our forecast all the time. So like if we say 50% chance of rain, I know people are like, oh, that's easy. I could put 50% on a screen and be wrong half the time. But that's not what I'm actually saying. I'm saying that half of our viewing area will see rain. So the percentage has to do with the amount of people that are watching our TV station, how many people will be affected, the percentage of people or the percentage of communities that will be impacted by rain or storms. Likewise, you know, so if I say there's only a 20% chance, well, that means that there's an 80% chance you won't see rain. We're not saying in Birmingham, there's a 50-50 chance, take your chance, or, you know, hey, in, in Montevallo, there's a 30% chance just for you. Who knows what it's going to do? You know, we don't try to leave you guessing. We try to explain the gaps in that, but that's what the percentage is. It's the amount of people. It's not a pinpoint uh, location. That is so good to know, and I'm definitely going to be telling all of my friends about that. <laughs> So my last question is from my friend. He is eight years old and he wants to know why is the study of weather called meteorology when you would think you would study meteors? Yes, that's a great question as well. So they, um, the, the word meteorologist actually did come from a Greek word. And my understanding is that the um that at one point galileo thought that anything in the atmosphere was meteors so he referred to like you know they were really meteors or like even if rain fell you know it was like that was kind of referred to in that uh meteor sense so i think it evolved in just becoming a meteorologist because originally they were studying meteors but then that kind of took into all of the scientists that were studying anything falling from the sky. And now we use it for forecasting, right? So now meteorologists study really what's going on with the clouds and the rain and the sun. We don't study meteors necessarily, but I think the name stuck and it came from a Greek word in the word me meteoros. It's like M-E-T, hold on, let me see. M-E-T-E-O-R, it's O-S is the Greek word, meteoros. That means anything falling from the sky. That is so interesting. Thank you yeah. so much for sharing. And thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to hang out with us and answer these questions today. Well, thank you for having me. Y'all take care. Thanks, bye. I'm so excited we were able to talk about weather and get our questions answered by Ashley today. I learned a lot during this interview and I really hope you did too. If you have any additional questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. I would love to read them and get back to you guys.